it's winter in Utah, and that means we have an interesting phenomenon going on. You may notice that it is a little bit foggy around me. But this isn't just fog, this isn't normal fog. I'm gonna turn and see if you can see a little bit better behind me. I'm at the Gateway Mall. Do you see how socked in everything is back here? So this isn't just normal fog, this is what we call an inversion. And this is something that isn't unique to Utah, but it's certainly noticeable because in Salt Lake City, there's a huge population in a valley. So there are a lot of people that notice this, a lot of people that deal with this, cope with this every winter. This is a phenomenon where when the, uh, when the winter gets particularly stable, I guess, when we have an area of high pressure, um, the weather doesn't vary much. So you have a valley, mountains on either side, cold air, smoggy air, pollution, car exhaust, factories, whatever. Um, everything gets trapped in the valley, the colder air gets trapped below a layer of warmer air. And that's called an inversion, because normally uh, colder air would be higher up, uh, up in the atmosphere, right? And it would be warmer down near the surface. But every winter in Utah, we get this inversion. And here's another view that'll be pretty obvious. That sign over there says the gateway, but you can't even see it. You can't even tell what it says. So, a couple of problems with the inversion. Um, Utah's dependent on tourism and outdoor recreation. A lot of people come from all over the world to come experience that. We have the Sundance Film Festival coming up in a couple of months. And when it's like this, people start asking questions like, why do I live in Utah again? Why am I here? Um, I start asking questions like that. But, there are a couple of things that you can do to get out of this. So, head south, go to central or southern Utah. Um, head up into the mountains, because in places like Park City and Heber, it can be 20 to 30 degrees warmer than this. So last year, um, on New Year's Day, I think, is when I went, but I went snowshoeing up American Fort Canyon, and we got up above this junk, and I got sunburned that day, snowshoeing. It was awesome. <laughs> so, uh, it, it's just one of, the, one of the elements that comes with living in Utah, especially in the winter. It's not good for public health. Um, this is only day two. Sometimes these inversions last up to a month, and it gets even worse than this. Um, but I definitely notice, you know, I, I like to run and bike. I don't go outside when it's like this, um, other than just walking from the train to my office. Because it feels like you have asthma almost. It feels like you're trying to exercise right behind a, an idling car. Because that's what a lot of this is, is exhaust from cars and traffic around Utah. So, I don't know. There are a lot of great, great things about living in Utah and about living in Salt Lake. This is definitely not one of them. In fact, I saw someone today post on Instagram, it was actually yesterday, I guess, but I saw it today, posted on Instagram, Smog Lake City. And that is not what we want to be known for. So, you know, there are all kinds of clean air initiatives and encouraging people to carpool and take mass transit and stuff like that, but really, short of a major weather disturbance, like a winter storm blowing out this junk, it's gonna be like this for the foreseeable future. Okay, here's a better view of the gateway. <laughs> All right, subscribe to this channel by clicking here. And on this side, check out some of the other videos that I made. This wasn't even really a review so much as like an explanation of what an inversion is, but if you've experienced this, let me know what you do to cope with this. There's a very real possibility of seasonal affective disorder too, just like you'd get from living in Seattle or something. So let me know. Thanks for subscribing.